Welcome back everyone for episode 8 of Salmon Report, ready to sum up all the weapon tips for this week's rotation. If you didn't see last week's episode, we talked about Glowfly Rush Wave in a full guide and I can't recommend it enough if you missed it. For starters, Salmon Report is a weekly YouTube series where we give our best tips and tricks to each week's weapon rotations to help you succeed more in your Salmon Run shifts. This week is looking okay overall, there are definitely some sketchy rotations that I'd be afraid of in freelance since the weapons are hard to handle, but hopefully I can help with some of that. Unfortunately, the best rotation in my opinion happens at the same time as Splatfest, so gotta choose there and I'm leaning towards Splatfest more, so this week is going to be less Salmon Run for me. First rotation is on Sockeye Station with Splat Roller, Dooley Squelchers, Nautilus and the Heavy Splatling, and immediately I think this will be the hardest rotation this week, simply because of having two Splatlings at the same time, as most players struggle with this weapon type. The Splat Roller is in my opinion your generalist roller, so if you played with all of them, it's pretty much in the middle and should mix all the different techniques to play it properly, so rolling and flinging at the same time. Remember to use slow rolling for weaker lessers and glowfly waves, and your vertical jumping flings are still very powerful against bosses such as the Steelhead that most rollers players forget to do. I also released a 1 minute quick guide to rollers I can't recommend enough to learn more which sums up everything nicely. The Dooley Squelchers are a long range less powerful Dooley type that excels at mobility at best. I would suggest to play it mid to long range as it's a very powerful gun and remember that the Dooley Squelchers do not fire faster after rolling, it only increases their accuracy so dodging isn't worth it for power. On the other hand they have a faster dodge roll and if you remember my tip about rolling with Dooleys you can use it to roll through salmon and ink without being slowed down, and if you jump after your first roll you can immediately do a second roll right after that we call roll cancelling. Because of the range I think they excel against steelheads, fish sticks and even drizzler torpedoes to help your team. For the two splatlings I would like to talk about them together as they have a somewhat similar playstyle. Splatlings are excellent DPS but somewhat sluggish weapons that most freelance players struggle with because of their mobility. For this it's recommended to stay behind with them or on high ground for which Sockeye Station is probably the best map as you can just stay on top of the tower. Most cases, co-workers tend to run out of ink with splatlings really fast and to help that I recommend getting used to charge cancelling, as in if you start shooting you can cancel it by entering swim form to make sure you're not wasting any more of your ink. Additionally remember to use partial charging as a full charge is not necessary most of the time to actually splat salmonids in front of you, this way you will not only be more efficient but can also stay alive longer. While the heavy splatling I recommend to stay at range as usual, the Nautilus is a special splatling that can hold its charge while swimming. This actually allows you to be more aggressive with the weapon and take larger risks as long as you have the charge ready. A not so known secret tech for the Nautilus is also that at the beginning of its firing it actually shoots faster than later, similarly to the ballpoint splatling and learning this properly can help you squeeze out more power from the gun. These two types of splatlings in general are very good against most bosses as long as they stay at range, after which they can greatly struggle if they get overwhelmed, so keep an eye out on your positioning. Second rotation this week is on Gone Fish and Hydro Plan and the weapons are the Tri Slosher, L3 Nuzzle Nose, the Split Brella and the 96 Gal. The Tri Slosher is a deceptive weapon as first impressions will tell you it's really powerful, but it actually lacks DPS to handle most bosses efficiently. Instead what the Tri Slosher excels at is at crowd control. It's one of the best weapons to deal with hordes of lesser salmonids thanks to its large splashes and so I would recommend helping your team clearing all the lessers most of the time. From the bosses the ones it can't really handle well are probably Steelheads but it's fairly decent against all the others. The L3 Nuzzle Nose is a burst firing shooter which makes it a pretty awkward shooter to use in Salmon Run and in general just really lacks proper firepower. It's decent against most bosses so it doesn't struggle at that, but because it's burst firing it handles stressful situations worse than normal shooters and can quickly get overwhelmed especially against lesser salmonids. I recommend staying at range with it and staying away from the shore if possible. The Split Brella is a strong brella compared to its brothers and it has decent paintings with all around good capabilities against all bosses. It probably excels against steelheads and stingers but it takes good practice to use them well so be cautious. Remember with brellas that their shields actually deal damage if you bump into salmonids, which makes them especially useful during special waves such as griller or glowfly wave to hold the wave against either small fries or chums as your shield will splat them. Pushing your brella against some bosses while also shooting will boost your damage enough to splat them faster for instance too. Finally remember that your brella while open can actually block steelhead bombs or flyfish missiles with proper aiming and practice, so they are especially good at being flyfish targets if you decide to only cripple them. Finally the 96 gal is an all rounder shooter that is strong against all bosses so it has no trouble with any of that. Its weaknesses come from being a relatively slow and sluggish weapon with mediocre painting. Stay closer to the basket or safe areas as much as you can since it's harder to survive if you're overwhelmed due to your lower fire rate 
and bad painting. But also remember your range is very good to take care of stingers or big shots, especially on this map with the Hydro Plant, where you can just stay on the platforms and stay safe. All in all, a decent rotation thanks to having two shooters, but since they are not great paintings and have their own nuances, I would play safer and remain cautious in freelance. The third shift is on spawning grounds, with the Splattershot Jr., Sloshing Machine, Range Blaster and the Gootuber. The Splattershot Jr. is a generalist shooter that is good against all bosses, though it can struggle a bit with Steelheads because of its lower range. What it excels at is its incapacity, which is the largest in the game, making it an absolute powerhouse for horde clearing and in general pushing back waves alone. It's one of my favorite weapons in Salmon Run, allows a lot of mistakes thanks to its ink tank and is excellent weapon to practice the game mode and your positioning. The Sloshing Machine is also a top weapon in Splatoon 3 Salmon Run thanks to its insane buffs it got since Splatoon 2. And instead of going through it, I have a whole video dedicated just to this weapon that I would recommend watching that is linked in the description or you can click on it at the top right of this video. The Range Blaster, while being a slow and sluggish weapon, is also quite decent. I would definitely recommend keeping your distance as blasters fall apart once overwhelmed, but if you find yourself surrounded, remember shooting under you to paint a good enough escape route. Blasters are excellent at painting walls, so start your waves with making sure all the crucial wall climbing spots are painted, that will help a team a lot. When it comes to bosses, they excel against fish sticks and stingers as a single shot at the middle of either of them from the range blaster can splat the whole boss. And they also handle steelheads, scrappers and steely as well. Their impact blast can actually be used similarly like a sloshing machine that if aimed behind or above Scrapper and a Steel Eel, you can bypass their armor and shields to damage them from any direction. Last, the Gootuber. It's a charger that can hold its charges longer and its niche is that you can swim with your charges held, similarly like the Nautilus. Since the Gootuber charges slower than your general chargers, I recommend practicing partial charges to split lessers to save yourself time and also be more efficient. Apart from that, remember general charger rules that they're excellent painters, their full charges pierce through multiple targets that make them really strong against lesser hordes. But next, I will really want to make a quick guide on how to play chargers in general. I think it's the next weapon most freelance players struggle with. The fourth rotation and this week's best rotation I think is on Sockeye Station with a Splat Dually, Scarbon Roller, Splattershot Pro and a Splat Charger. Splat Duallys are one of the top 5 weapons you can get in Salmon Run. They are good in any situation basically and can handle every single boss very efficiently thanks to their fire rate, range and overall DPS. To make best use of them, make sure you use your rolls as you fire faster after rolling and this will help your DPS, especially against Gohozuna. I have no specific tips for them as they are so good it's your general Salmon Run experience that will matter the most, since Splat Duallys pretty much carry themselves. The Carbon Roller is one of the niche rollers you can get, since unlike most rollers they cannot roll through chums and they would bounce back. Instead, the Carbon Roller embrace the whack-a-mole playstyle and you should be rapidly swinging with them thanks to their excellent horizontal fling speed. They can handle most bosses well, but I would avoid going for stingers or fist sticks with them as your other weapons are just better at that duty in this rotation. One crucial tip for this weapon is doing Glowfly Rush Wave. Remember that Glowfry Rush Chums have less health than normal Chums, and even the Carbon Roller can hold them back and roll through them and carry this special wave. The Splattershot Pro is a generalist long-range shooter that has two weaknesses. It has mostly mediocre damage, because of its relatively low fire rate, and its tank capacity is also pretty atrocious. While it can handle most bosses well thanks to its range, it should still play careful as you can't paint well, and you will also run out of ink a lot, so keep closer to the basket and keep your distance if you can. As I mentioned, it can deal with all bosses, so that is no problem, but lessers can quickly overwhelm you, especially if your ink management is bad. The fourth weapon this rotation is the Splat Charger. Your average charger gun with no specialties really, so that means general charger tips apply here. They can paint pretty well at the start of the wave, so remember to do that. Don't forget to fully charge your shots to pierce through multiple enemies, especially lesser hordes, and from all the bosses you excel the most against steelheads. Lock onto those steelhead bombs and split them more efficiently than any other weapon can in Salmon Run, which alone is a great deal of help for any team. But as I mentioned, I will want to make a charger guide to help you with this weapon type more. And the final rotation is on Gonefish and Hydro Plant again with the Luna Blaster, Flings of Rollers, Batana Stemper and the Jet Squelcher. Luna Blasters are your short range shotgun like blasters and that makes it a favorite for a lot of players thanks to its ease of use. Opposite of usual blasters, it's a lot better at short range and dealing with hordes alone and it is a lot harder to get overwhelmed with. It deals 200 damage with a direct shot so it can handle all bosses and lesser salmonids with no problem, but as usual for blasters they excel against fish sticks and stingers especially. Feel free to play more open with the Luna Blaster, but remember to help clearing lesser salmonids instead of Ramboing on the shore. 
The Flinks Roller is your fling specialist among rollers, and while it can roll through chums and small fries that is especially useful during Glow Fly Wave, the boss it really excels against is the Steelhead. The Flings of Roller can one-shot the Steelhead with a single jumping fling, that can of course be used against other bosses as well, just remember that your main damage is from flinging and not rolling. It has really good painting also, but ink management can be really tough with it so be careful. The Jet Squelcher is also a generalist long-range shooter, with the longest range actually among shooters. It has decent damage but relatively slow fire rate, which means it can handle all bosses without a problem, except maybe Drizzlers where the fire rate is just not enough and could be an issue. Its main weakness is getting overwhelmed by less assaminates, so it's crucial to stay at range with it, as it's neither good at painting nor at handling chums and small fry, so definitely don't go to the shore and instead make use of your excellent range to handle stingers and fish sticks from afar. Finally, the Splatana Stamper, one of my new favorites in Splatoon. Splatanas are still very niche since they are new, but they are one of the best weapon types by far thanks to their incredible versatility. All Splatanas deal bonus damage in melee when your weapons hit Salmonids, whether it's a charge shot or not. But charge melee hits are among the top 5 best DPS in Salmon Run and can absolutely wreck even Kohozuna. Normal tap firing can handle hordes or fist sticks well, and are also great painters, but while I see players use it against stingers, remember your charge shots. Charge shots create a piercing wave that if targeted well can go through hordes just like chargers. Going in melee and shooting a wave up towards the sky can one or two shot stingers and similarly like a sloshing machine, if you aim above hordes your charge heavy wave will not get absorbed but instead go through all targets making it a great horde clearer. Similarly during glowfly rush wave your melee attacks hold back chums very well. But that is it for my tips for this week's salmon report everyone, I'm recovering well from my sickness. But if I was less energetic, please forgive me, I'm doing my best to get better. But you know the drill, if I missed any tips or you have something additional to say, let us know in the comments, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you so much for tuning in for another week of weapon tips for Salmon Run, and I hope this will help you. If you're interested in more, subscribe and check out the rest of the channel for more Salmon Run guides as well. Thank you for watching, and take care.